Hello again. Welcome. Hi. How's it going? Oh, I'm super glad you're here. Um, all right. Sweet. Welcome again. We I had to cut off a little, sh well, no, not a little short. I was aiming for 10 minutes and I got to 10 minutes. Um, but we're about to delve into the brush tool. And this is the almighty powerful tool, uh, which you use a lot. So it's really good to know, to understand what you're doing. While this jerk wastes his own time back there, I'll give you a tip that he never bothers to mention. Now, if you're on a PC and you hold Alt and right click, or if you're on a Mac and you hold Control and Alt, then left click, you can change the brush size by moving left and right. And you can change the brush pressure by going up and down. Now, without this shortcut, you'll waste as much of your time as he is right now, thinking people are listening to him. When did you grow a mustache? I did not. It's not real. I'm incognito. Why? Yeah, there are some people looking for me that I do not want to be found by. But it's only a mustache. And my hirsute lip will fool even the sharpest of minds. It's, it's not even the right color, Tommy. Your hair's gray. Or is it that my mustache is brown? Well... What is yeah, that? Yeah, you're wasting my time now. I got stuff to do. Sweet, cool. Right, brush tool over here. So let's just shut up, Nick. Get rid of him. Uh, I, oh, Christ. Come on, Zed. Right. I'm not going to go into this too much detail right now, but here's a list of little filters you can put up. I'm just going for a solid color, and I want a nice gray. -y. Okay. And then I'm going to add another layer. This button here adds a fresh, clean, empty layer that's completely transparent and reveal everything underneath. Um, but I'm going to paint on that. Okay, so brush tool. Here we go. Um, it paints, doesn't it? See? But I don't want blue. I want black. I use, as I mentioned in the intro to the series, um, that I use a Wacom tablet, an Intuos 3. I have an Intuos 4, but I prefer my classic Intuos 3. And that is basically the tablet with a pen, because it means that I can feel all traditional-like when I'm doing my painting, so that I don't feel like I'm cheating too much by using a mouse. I've got my pen in my hand. I'm a, it's a trade. So uh, I like... I like my pen, and not only is the pen brilliant, this setting up here with the brush tool, which is B, of course, uh, not of course, but there it is, is the pressure sensitivity. You don't get this with a mouse. When you click, I'll, if I've got a mouse here, right, I'll show you. So here's my mouse. Uh, oh, right, here we go. Uh, so if I click, of course, there's no pressure. I can't. Every click will be the same size, the same darkness, the same everything. Whereas with my pen, I can ever so lightly feather it. I don't, I don't, I don't want to get a bit darker and a bit darker until it is blacker than the night itself. Um, that's what the pressure does, and it's very useful. Um, so, and to be honest, I tried, I can't remember what pad it was. I bought some dodgy pad. I thought, yeah, I'm going to be an artist on the Photoshop. I'm just going to get any old cheap-ass pad I can and just connect to my Photoshop. It didn't work. Press sensitivity was a pain. So I would recommend Wacom. It is the industry standard. I recommend it. Also for the pen, there's this button. If I do that, it's going to, if I press very lightly, it's going to be very small. If I press very hard, it's going to be big. If I turn it off, it should. Um, oh, that's because I don't get this. This I'm sure it's a bug because this isn't the first place I've come across this. Don't worry about all this. Um, but it basically means because it's still making it smaller as though that is turned on, I don't want that. It should be uniform in size, but still pressure sensitive in everything else. Um, and that's because the size has been set to pre pen pressure. Sometimes it just doesn't turn it off. So now when I p p uh, paint, p p p p p pick up a penguin, um, the size won't change. It will still get lighter and softer and blacker um but it's not going to change size unless i turn that back on in which case there you go off that's a nice fuzzy line and then on i won't find you there we are so that's 
These are the options that you have available to you if you have a pen. If you don't and you're a mouser, tough titty. Uh, right, I could delete uh, delete all that or erase all that or command alt Z all that or I could just delete the damn layer. Bye. Yeah, I uh, don't show that again. I don't need to know that. So, and then I just make a new layer. That saves me erasing everything. Okay, so... Um, in fact, I should really go into the... Uh, I'll let me do this first. So, opacity. Uh, let's go 20%. I think you know what that means. It means full pressure. Full, full. If I take the pressure sensitivity off, this will behave like a mouse. Um, full whack, I'm only going to get 20%. doesn't matter how hard I press. Even if I click with my mouse, it's the same. Um, and then it will just add. So, the next one would be that 40% black. And then 60% black. 80% black, 100% black. It's not actually quite, uh, there's some weird calculation going on here that I don't know about, or I don't care, it don't help me. So that's the opacity, and you can change the opacity just with the number pad without having to click, so I want to go back to 100, boom. Flow, I, you know, I never use it. Well, if I, well I probably am, but I'm not 100% sure, maybe. It's... He's doing tutorials and he doesn't know what flow does? Jerk. Hey, fortunately, I do. Now, if you have flow set to 0%, it behaves as if you're sketching very lightly, which allows you to build up color a lot slower. Hey, for instance, if you were to shade something in a drawing, you would want flow set very low, as low as this jerk's IQ. He does. And I shall use it as part of my arsenal. Um, sweet. Cool, that's what flow does then. Smooth in. I think that's if I draw a line, it's going to try and smooth it and help me. Like in, like when in Flash, um, Flash uh, MX, you know, that old, old chestnut, the animation program for webs. I think that's what, yeah, that's what it does. So it's just making, if I didn't have smoothing on, zero, this line looks rubbish look at that but if i turn smoothing all the way up my land's nice oh i like that okay so that's that um i think you know this whole tutorial is going to be about the brush panel because there's still so much to talk to about so let's get rid of that i don't want that channel uh level blur layer <laughs> right so the brush panel now this this is exciting so obviously earlier we had the size jitter. So this here is the preview of what the brush will look like when you're done faffing around. So shape dynamics, size jitter. So it's changing its size. So when I draw, it ain't going to stay the same size. Let's have a look. Uh, there it is. I'm make it bigger so you can you guys can see. It. So it, you can see it's changing, changing the size, and to be honest, looking like intestines. Um. Obviously, minimum demand, so it's how minimum diameter. Try saying that after 10. Minimum diameter. That's how small it's going to get. Um, and the maximum is the size you've got. So the minimum diameter, if it's 100%, then it's not going to change size. But if it's 1% or 0%, then it can get very small. Angle jitter. You know what? When you've got a circle, it don't make a difference. But it's basically going to twist, twist the... If you had a brush that was like a square and you had angle jitter, the square would just rotate randomly as you're painting. Roundness jitter, that's about how much pressure sensitivity it's going to do. So if I move up, um, so the angle jitter is actually, so that's, yeah. And minimum roundness. Uh, phew, there are brushes in here, loads of them, loads of brushes. So... There are times you're going to want to make your own, but I really bother. Oh, God, I've got minutes. This is going to have to be a long one, peeps. No choice. Scattering. Now, if I scatter, look at that. It's basically going to randomly paint around the area, like some kind of leopard spots. Um, count. It's going to be how many each side, so that's crazy. It's getting difficult to see. So I'm going to delete that layer and make a new one. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of them. Count jitter. Oh, oh, okay. So now it's going to 
So there's sometimes going to be less extra bits and sometimes there'll be more. But it just looks a lot like more. And you could probably make some cute textures with it. But we're not going to do that. Command Z, Command Z, Command Alt Z. Um, it gets interesting in a minute. Because it has been so far, you jerk. No texture. I don't bother. Really? It's not easy to make texture on solid black objects. <sighs> don't know. Texture each. Never used it. Dual brush. I think this mixes in another brush. So I'll be painting with my brush. And... I mean, you can get some fairly sweet effects. That's like, you know... Oh, what's that game? Street Fighter. Ah. Fight! Um, the newer ones. That smoke that comes out of their arms. I reckon they're doing this. Yoga Flame! Uh, Hadouken! Whatever. So that's that. This is why my, <laughs> my, tutorial, my tutorials go on for longer. Because I'm talking rubbish. So dual brush, that's what that does. Colour dynamics. Ah, yes. This... I think it's going to, a quick tip, X um, changes your colors. So these two, foreground and background, will switch with X. So I want to pick, uh, let's get a nice, uh, something, a, a, a nicer blue. Um, and then X, I want to pick the next one. So this is doing the foreground and background. And these are important because gradients use these two colors, as will the, uh, the stroke dynamics. So... A uh, hue jitter means it's going to change a lot of the colours or, or make some of it a uh, different colours it should do anyway. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so wait, that's not jittering. Saturation zitter. zitter? Oh, hang on. Uh, apply the tip. I don't know what that does. Okay, there we go. So now you can see it's changing the, the actual colour of it a bit and adding more. And it's also changing, some of the colours will be vibrant, some of them won't, they'll just be flat dull. And that's why we get so many different colours. Um, a psychedelic, dude, that's so freaking awesome. Brightness jitter is going to make some of it dark, some of it bright. So it's just another added element. Um, purity, I don't know. What if I go down to zero purity? Oh, okay. So it's how pure the colours are. That's a nice. Okay, so that's cool. Um, I don't like my colours. I think they're awful. So I'm going to get a blue, press X, and then maybe get a green. That guy. And then what? Yeah, that's nice. I like that better. I like that way better. Um... Okay, so the next one, transfer, is is up here in shape dynamics pretty much. I don't get it. Opacity jitter, uh, how much transparency it's going to apply to each stroke. I don't need it. Don't need an opacity jitter at all. I'm taking my color dynamics off. Um, again, don't bother with that. Brush pose. That's just the angle jitter, I guess, but with more detail. Don't bother. Wet edges is cool because it makes it look like... Um, you're painting um, with like oil paints or something. I'm going to turn the shape dynamics off because it's not as easy to see. So it's kind of moving the edges as though you're painting, you're moving the boundary. If, if, if wet edges wasn't on, the edges will always be soft. Like that, you see, it's like blurred around the edge. So, in fact, I might be able to make it easier if I go like this. So that's that. Then if I put wet edges on and go to that, the edges, like, it gets like a boundary. And then you just keep moving the boundary, and I think it even darkens it as you go. So it makes it look like you're painting with a big earth wet brush. Build up is good because um, when you paint, it's still going to keep some of it underneath and it will just build up as, as it would if you were painting on actual paper. Um, smoothing. Pfft, don't know, but I like it. I like it a lot. I like this brush. Maybe I will brush 
amoebas. It looks like it's from under a microscope. There we go. Um, I've gone over the time. I'm on 14 minutes. Christ on a bike. So that's the brush tool done. Apart from the bits you don't know about. Yeah, I said at the beginning, Tommy, I know what I need to know to make the pictures I want, and that's pretty much all I can teach. Well, that's not all you're teaching them, though, is it, huh? Hmm? Hey, they're learning what a jerk sounds like. <sighs> so long.